that. So it seems PowerPoint is causing some troubles. So this is the PDF version. I'm talking about how Biomark introduces semantic web queries to federated biomedical scale databases. Biomark, who knows what Biomark is? Raise your hand. Okay, so I have plenty of people who don't know what Biomark is. So Biomark is a query-oriented data management system which um, addresses scalability issues because we want to uh, query very large biomedical size databases. So not only in the megabyte or gigabyte size, but terabyte size. We incorporate um, data federation, which means that you cannot just query a local database on your um, local server, but you can also import data from remote servers. And we offer optimizations so that you can actually transform your databases into schema which are more efficient to query. Biomart is um, organized in a three-tier structure. We have the client here, which provides um, a user web application interface, which means you can have a web server so that users can actually um, serve your data structures, right? But it also allows for web services, programmatic access, um, using REST queries, so does or Sparkle. Below that, we have um, Java API, which you can also use to query our databases. And we also have a query engine running here. Oh, you can read, not read this. So this has query engine, which actually deals with um, decomposing and optimizing the queries so that you can assess the local and federated databases and it does query optimization and things like that. And below that, there are your action databases which are, are hidden from the user so they can be remote. They don't have to, to be on your side, but you can also use um, major DBMS systems like MySQL, Postgres, DB2, Oracle, and all that stuff. So we do all that to um, run a couple of servers. So there are local installations, this is NGI, IKMC, EMMA. And these servers all provide local Biomart installations. So people can um, use these Biomarts to assess these data stores. But at the Ontario Institute of Cancer Research, we run the central portal, which links out to all these data sources and provides a unified web interface to this, where you get all these databases which you can assess from this one particular website. But you can also um, use Biomart to augment your data. So for example, there's the International Cancer Genome Consortium, which offers um, cancer-related data sources. And Pfizer, for example, is running um, the Pro Mart, And that is hidden. This is a private mark. And what it does is it incorporates from Cosmic Ensemble, CAC, and Reactum. Okay, this is better. There you go. Um, and then incorporates this in, in the Mart, which is then offered also via web interfaces and the programmatic interfaces. So, Biomart does not just offer running queries, it also offers query optimization. And it, it does this in two steps. So first, it offers you um, the possibility to rewrite your data into a denormalized form, which means if you have your data available in 3NF, then you can transform it in a reverse bar schema, which looks like this. So you have a main table, dimension tables, other main tables, dimension tables. And if you don't really know what this is, it's you probably know this from, from, from web applications where you denominate your data by doing an, an auto join on your data because then you can query it faster. That's basically what we are doing, just a little bit more complicated because if you have more than one table, you have to do this reverse task or thing. What you have to remember from this slide, slide is just um, you can search faster and the data retrieval becomes quicker. And this runs automatically, so you don't really have to do anything, as long as your data is in 3 m Then we have the FBiomark's query engine, which does the second step of query optimization. It, um, so this query engine 
is available, um, is behind the web interface, but also behind all the programmatic interfaces. And what it does basically is, after a couple of validation steps, it splits your query into sub-queries, and these are also um, not only executed in parallel, but also sequentially in a certain way, that you then, if you join the data at the end, you get data quickly on all of your databases. And that's really important if you federate databases from URL sources. So data which is not on your local server, this actually speeds things up quite a lot. So what we actually offer is the Bagmart Central Portal, which, so we don't pass all this data, but we have this portal which allows you to assess all these databases. One of the biggest ones are probably as Ensemble, and we have Cosmic, um, React Home in Canada, and all these other databases, which you can assess through one website, the central portal. And then there's also the International Cancer Genome Consortium, which, well, does cancer research. And they have all these um, databases, which are also federated in a single um, biomart, which you can assess. So, but back to the topic about Spark and Queers and Biomar. So there are these big biological databases like Ensemble, Vega is kind of big, and there's Unicrod, React Home. And on the other hand, you have the ontologies, right? But these are usually separate. They are not very well incorporated, well, except for Unicrod now. <laughs> and why are they not really incorporated so well? So the thing is, in practice, for example, Ensemble, contains 30 billion triples, if you estimate it, roughly. And the Biomart Central Portal has 35 databases, which it has, or probably serves, right? And Ensemble is just one of them. And the ICGC also has 20 databases, and the largest triple store engines are evaluated of less than a billion triples, right? So in the previous talk, we heard that querying these large databases is not such a problem, but that's only true if you have a really, really big server. And I think, and I disagree a little bit from the previous speaker, that not everyone has a 64 gigabyte um, byte memory server in his closet, right? So I think it's kind of reasonable to assume that 16 gigabytes of memory are like, that, that's what you have, right? And you may have a lot of storage, but it doesn't really get much bigger than this. And this is basically the, um, what they did in 2007 when they evaluated these travel stores. So what Biomark can actually assess these really huge databases and it does these query optimizations. So what we did from in, in Biomark 08, this is a new release of Biomark, um, in the release candidate 6, we introduced Sparkle queries, which are very basic Sparkle queries, and we return the result as Sparkle XML. That's basically what the W3C um, defines as a default return format. For all the um, databases, which we um, show in all our central portal and also in the ICGC um, portal, we allow the automatic ontology generation, which generates the web ontology language ontology automatically for you. So that's not, of course, not super smart because it doesn't really know the data structures you have in your database, but it's something you can start from. And with the RC7 version of Biomark, it actually allows you to customize this ontology and to load it back in again. So the subset of Sparkle we uh, support is basically Biomark doesn't allow you to run arbitrary queries like in SQL, right? Because you can formulate queries which are very cost um, yeah, costly to run. So in Biomark you can only do certain queries, which means you can ask for certain attributes in your database, which is like columns, and if it's federated, it doesn't matter, you can just ask for these attributes. And you can set certain filters on them, which are constraints. So you can um, constrain your result set to something um, smaller. So we support all these queries um, in our Sparkle subset. 
than the data federation. In Sparkle, that's not always so clear how that's supposed to be going to work. In Weimar, we have data sets, and in Sparkle, you can define from clauses, and you can use this to actually um, query several federated databases at the same time. And the only thing which is um, to which for technical reasons, you can only query this works right now. So in RDF, you have the, the subject and predicates, right, which can be, or which have to be non-literals. Those you cannot query from all, because we would have to generate this data on the fly. And I haven't got my head around how to do that right now, efficiently. So for now, you can only query the literals, which is basically the things which are in your database. In order to figure out what you can actually query, you can do a feature discovery by um, retrieving the ontology, which is automatic, automatically generated for each data um, set you have in your database. And you can then load this ontology in Protege, Swoop, and all these other um, all the tools which you have. And I give a small demonstration a little bit later. Um, the query looks like, like this, which you probably know. So here it says, give me all cosmic sample IDs, sample names, until gene IDs, um, from the block bone marrow samples. Here we have a small header, which has to be pretty much always the same. Then you can select, say, where do you want it from, what do you want it from the cosmic. Um, data set, and then you give the attributes here, and you say the filter here is the bone marrow, which should apply to sample source. These queries actually can be automatically generated from the web interface, which I can also show a little bit later. Actually, I'll show it now. So, okay, so this is the website. Okay, so this is a website which can later then be used today and tomorrow for actually running web queries. We have two servers, there's a biomart. So these are just set up for the hackathon, right? We have um, proper portals, but I don't have the access privileges to restart these servers. So we have set up um, separate servers just for the hackathon, which I can monitor constantly. And if there are any problems with your queries, then you can come back to me. So there are two, there's this one. And there's also the ICPC one, which you can use. And if you want to run queries, it's really simple. Let's go back to the other one. Here I can scroll down, and I can see under the database is genome. I have the ensemble genes 63. And I click on that. And then I get a wizard. It asks me what I want to, to query, which data sets, blah, 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 which filter set, filters I want to set, where I can say, I want to query only those genes which are protein coding. And it asks me what I want as output. And I say, OK, I want the ensemble gene ID. Start and strand. There are many more things you could actually pick from. Let's say the results. And the web interface gives you a preview of the data, which you can then download. And here there's this little sparkle button. If you click on the sparkle button, then you get the sparkle query, which gives you basically the same result. And then you can copy and paste this sparkle query. If I go back to the main side, here on the right hand side, you see here, there's this little example how you can actually write some Ruby code to retrieve this data from Sparkle. And there's this little Ruby script, which is here, which actually does a little bit more than the sample code here. So you can copy and paste the, the query which we saw um, on the website into a file which has the same name as this config here, right? Because this is an access point, you have to wiremark. So I just copied it, 
copy and pasted it in this file, and I put a limit 10 at the end, so that we only get 10 result rows, right? And if I execute this, so this is a script which you can download from the website, Firemark Sparkle Ruby. You give the, the host name, which is a tester the part. If I execute this, oh my god, it doesn't work. No, I think it's just very slow. So then you get uh, um, these 10 rows you asked for. And if you actually look in the Ruby card, this is for, um, formatted as TSV. But that's, of course, not um, what is returned in the Sparkle XML. The Sparkle XML looks like this. And there you have your semantically annotated data. Basically, you have the bindings, right? The start position, end position, strand, ensemble GNAD, and then you get the return results, which are right now only literals, right? Because right now you can only return literals. And now we can go back to the presentation. Oop. Yes. And so the Sparkle person, that's really just me and the YMR team. But then there are the, all these other guys which work on the query engine, the web front end, and all these other things. And we have the mailing as well, but can post um, questions and we will try to answer them. Thank you. Makes 
possible to, to create a query on the fly, right? Um, without, that allows you to explore the data set, create a query. But you're actually starting with, uh, in most cases, I suppose, relational schema, and you're creating the sparkle sort of the RDF representation after the fact, wouldn't it be nice if you had if you had the RDF representation to begin with, that would would that make a nicer foundation for for this uh, that, that process? Would be, that would be nice. <laughs> but <laughs> on all the databases we have, um, there, there's no ontological annotation in there. So so we have to start from the other side. We have all this data, we don't have semantics for it. But that makes it, it seems like a bit of a magic trick to me, so I'll, I'll be asking you more questions later. Thanks. Yeah, fine. Yeah, so. No, no. no. Okay. I can hear you. So, no. Uh, uh, okay. so anyway, uh, so you only return uh, uh, data attributes and results. So, in some case, you know that some of these data attributes is an identifier. So, you could easily return your eyes. Yeah, so that's something which um, you probably can do already. So you can probably already say, if you know okay, this attribute is always in the ensemble gene identifier, then you can annotate it properly. And this should work right now, but there are some untested things about that. At least you know in your database of rates. Yeah, yeah, of course. Directly yes. Could already make the things much more than that. Yes, you have to do it manually, of course, right. because there is no magic, right? Um, but. Yeah, so that, that, that would be possible. And if your data is, if your data structures are so simple that you have data of one kind in, in one column, then this is we prefer to do it right. But not all databases are like that. Some databases have multiple types of data in one column, and then it actually becomes complicated because you would have to set a field and which distinguishes what you actually return to write into that. Uh, one word, uh, the 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 biomark can contain the people structure data, but you know, uh, semantic work has uh, like three structure, one column to have several multiple, one column has multiple items in the in the table. If you, if you saw it, uh, table. Is it possible to all, all kind of tree structure data into the table? Maybe once the data is stored in a table structure in a biomark system, it would be a very nice system to retrieve the data and integrate and making queries, like a, a, a spot like query. So the first initial storage of a very complex data would be, I think it's a little bit difficult. To, is it, is it right? mm, I'm not entirely sure what you mean, but um, so the thing is either you have triple subscribers, which is something which we don't have in our database, right? or you have your data in three map, and then you always have a primary key and, and these other columns which are related to it, and then we take for each um, primary key, so we basically make one object out of it, right? and the data properties are basically the values. In, the, in this particular column, or multiple columns for this primary key, right? So that's how we create all these objects. But we do not generate um, a triple stock because some of the, or most of our databases, we don't post them, so we cannot modify our customized databases, right? Um, so we have to build something on top of that, and, and that, that means that we have to do something on the fly. So we are limited in that sense a little bit. But on the other hand, it means that for people who don't have a um, semantic web enabled start, right? Biomark can actually enable it semantically, in a sense. The main problem is that uh, it doesn't work for the right? doesn't work, but. I think the main problem is that if you don't have UIs in the output, any kind of UIs, even for some simple identifier, you basically cannot compose queries uh, in a semantic web framework. So you need some software to process them and then to find identifiers and mesh information and so on. You cannot. Yeah, exactly. So the, the reason why you can only query networks right now is because we don't have a network. Right? It's just not there. 
just um, in, a, in a sense it's a flat file which is not updated. And so I'm thinking of um, providing some functionality to create these networks. It actually would be enough if, uh, I mean, you know in the database which is a dynamic level, or if which combination of columns is the key essentially. It would be enough if uh, when you have this, you basically map it to your URI. For whichever result you have, you map this to the URI and the rest will have to do it. It doesn't always work like that, but yeah, but that would be yeah, the way it would be. 90% of the cases. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that was the